You are listening to Food for Worms, the original true grime podcast. She gave me a new heart. My old one was too damn blue. I nearly drank this young body into a cold and lonesome tomb. I found the rivers that divided all my thoughts and broken melodies. No matter how long you stand on your two legs, something's bound to bring you to your knees. I will aim to shoot the moon. It's not Now, now we're turning ourselves on. <laughs> everybody, right. everybody, turn yourself on. Ugh. Ugh. Uh huh. Yeah, feel it. Stretching. Oh, yeah. Do your sun salutation. <laughs> Damn, no. oh, no, no, I'm stay. No, no, I'm stay over here. No, I'm, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already too sweaty joke. to start doing a bunch of movements up here. So there you go. Okay. Got your fan, your oh, Mister, Mister and Hand, yeah. Hand and the other. <laughs> <laughs> I got my Lacroix in one hand, and I got my baby, my uh, my baby in the my other. Baby. <laughs> my baby, Lacroix <laughs> and your baby. I, I, I found a T-shirt at a at a thrift store the other day. Speaking of Lacroix, and on the back of it, it said Lacroix, your your uh, your favorite sparkling water, and on the front it said Lacrosse, Wisconsin. And I was confused as fuck. I didn't know what the oh, hell was going okay, on because it's because it's uh, Lacroix is based out of uh, Wisconsin. Oh, is I never I never knew. Oh no, I yeah I looked this up. There was because we were making a T-shirt, um, and we still are. But it, it I was doing this whole bit where it's like uh, I found out that um, pamplemousse is just is French for grapefruit, but there's the pamplemousse flavor, and then there's also the grapefruit flavor, and then the same fucking thing. <laughs> so for I didn't, that, I, didn't, I, I guess was, I didn't know that. <laughs> I always get the grapefruit. Uh, no, like it, you, you're getting the same thing, but it's like these two different things exist. And then I was, then I did this fucking deep dive, and I found out that it's the company is based in fucking Wisconsin. So I was just like, I was like, then why? Does yeah. nothing matter? Is nothing sacred? <laughs> I guess so the, the French, that that French connection or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Was there a lot of French people that migrated to Wisconsin? Let's just assume. trappers, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Back in the probably day, trappers. they're trappers. God, I haven't heard about trappers in a while. Isn't it always like they were really into the um, the beaver pelts? Is that's what the trapper? Yeah. That was like that was like gold back. It's a whole back different kind time. of trapping them than what we think of in the, in this era. Yeah, yeah. trap music really. back how, in the day was a different want... genre altogether. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a different genre of trapping. <laughs> Dude is playing like beaver pelts. <laughs> Stretch, yeah, stretched over uh, uh, handmade drums out of stone. It's like, it's like raps about the the hard life of a of a fur trapper. Yeah, oh pouring out God. Lacroix for your homies. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a key lime Lacroix recently that actually kind of upset me. I'm sorry, like. Because I'm like I'm like key lime pie, I'm all for it. But key lime Lacroix, there was just a there was a sweetness to it that I wasn't expecting, and it kind of like it didn't ruin my day by any means. But it <laughs> was like, like a yeah, you throw it on the ground. yeah. I was I took a sip out. I was like I was like the fuck is this? I was like <laughs> okay, I'm thinking because well, you get the you get like a light green can. You're thinking like this is going to taste crisp, refreshing, refreshing yeah, lemony, refreshing. whatever. In this case, it's like, we want you to think this is a pie. And I'm like, this is not what I want in a fucking LaCroix. And then and then you sit there, you unpack it, like I did, and then you get over it, and you realize how privileged you are to even be drinking one. <laughs> to, to have and the then, time yeah, you move on. to, like, <laughs> yeah, get upset yeah, about that's it. That's what's <laughs> impacting your day. <laughs> yeah, and then you bitch and moan about it on your podcast two weeks later, man. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, to keep anyway. it in the, in the privilege section, though, I gotta be honest, like, I'm a fan of the sparkling waters, but Kind of anything outside of the the pamplemousse grapefruit flavor and the lime and mm-hmm. lemon, it, it it's all kind of like a weird, disappointing situation for me. Like I one hundred percent agree. Like, I don't like grapefruit. This? I don't like grapefruit ju- juice, and I love grapefruit uh, uh, Lacroix and pamplemousse. 
And I didn't even know that that was grapefruit because they do taste the same now that you say they, that, Darian. <laughs> they are the exact same. So, so it's like you're going to get it. You're going to be like, this is great. I'm like, no, nothing matters, Sam. <laughs> and with that in mind, everybody, welcome to Food for Worms. How... <laughs> I'm your Hi, host, everybody, Sam. I'm Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. That's Sam. I'm Darian. And today we're on with uh, the impeccable Joshua Marshall. Can we get like all clap? Like... We we need to get like one of those things. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much for being hand here. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need we need to get like a a, a fucking an applause machine. We're gonna we're gonna wear that shit the fuck out. It's gonna be <laughs> yeah. like it's gonna be like a what 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 shows were were heavy on those uh, on the applause machine? I'm trying to think like uh, every, Sanford and Son. Yeah, and, every sitcom in the like nineties. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, way, yeah, way, way, way too much. <laughs> yeah. Friends and uh, 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 how I met your mother. <laughs> how I met your mother. Yep. Oh God, that fucking yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Slaps giving. Slaps giving. Um. But yeah, man. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you're not familiar, everybody, Joshua Mil- Joshua Marshall is uh, uh, right now a fucking solo artist, fucking killing it out in Eugene, Oregon. Um, but he um hails from the Larry and his Flash crew. Uh, someone that me and Sam have gotten to see and experience on more than one occasion, but uh, me and Jeshua ha- uh, met at one of their last shows in Minneapolis. Sam's gotten kicking with them before, and uh, just, just, just the overall fan, just in general. But as, but you, you've uh, recently put out a new album called "Shoot the Moon." Beautiful work, but I, I did want to say this: <laughs> Are you aware that if you shoot the moon, that it will throw the tilt off of the earth and then we could all just be <laughs> that's, that's the whole point dude yeah <laughs> the whole world obviously if you if you pull a uh what's his face um uh he's a namek a piccolo for fucking dragon balls and you just destroy the moon oceans would rise oh. okay the, the it's the one thing keeping us from floating off into fucking space <laughs> good good point well, and, and, keep that in mind <laughs> <laughs> D and I, we were talking uh, earlier because I had, um, you know, we, uh, my, my old band, uh, Why We Can't Have Nice Things, we played with Larry and his flask back in the day and Larry. at a, a town called Annandale, I think. And I think you guys just stopped in just for gas money. So you're like playing a show in between two shows or something. Oh, okay. And that's when I had, you and I just like, uh, we, we went aside and like kicked it after the show. And, and I, um, I just remember like telling you, you're like my favorite, um, energy, like the amount of energy, like the, the music is amazing, but like the whole band and everything just carries so much energy. And then mm-hmm. with this new album that you came out with shoot the moon, it you like carried that over into your own thing like you didn't lose any of that which i'm i'm extremely stoked about and that's why when i was like uh you know putting it out there i, I think i posted on instagram like hey great new music in 2021 um mm-hmm. i can feel the energy through just the album which i was stoked on so be, oh. being a fan and all man thank you so much and thank you guys a ton for having me you know we kind of just jump just flipped into it but I really appreciate appreciate you guys and what you what y'all do with the podcast and everything else, man. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank, oh, man. No, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, we're we're big fans. Yeah, we were we were talking about um just like your stage presence. Like I, I haven't had the pleasure of being able to see um uh your 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 solo stuff uh, live yet, but you're gonna be doing some shows pretty soon. So please please let people know. Um Absolutely. but um but just your overall stage presence, like I've just never seen someone so full, filled with joy, and the way that you do, you just have this fucking. Your eyes are alive, your cheeks are rosy, your hair is just in the fucking wind. You literally, you would just, if you had tearaway pants, the pants would be gone if you had the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> You're giving them ideas now. That's yeah. <laughs> like there was, uh, there was one show. show now. <laughs> <laughs> there was one show with uh, Foxy Shazam um, at an old defunct venue now in Minneapolis. But uh, um, y'all, y'all open for that one. And I just remember the whole time just watching you, your your brother uh, on drums. He's fucking high energy, love 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 everybody. But just like you, you and him both both trading. It was like ah, just like yeah, fucking. You're just, and you don't miss a fucking beat. But this uh, but you're uh, just just the hips are waving, the hair is fucking flowing, <laughs> and I don't know. And then you lift up the fucking bass, and you're like standing on it for one second. I'm just, I'm just always very much impressed with with your work. 
So <laughs> that's just us gushing right now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, can can you can you tell us about uh, Shoot the Moon and like like what like what this was for you to create? Yeah, well, first off, I want to say I'm going to take take your tip on the next the next pressing. I'm going to put like warning: do not actually attempt to shoot the moon. <laughs> shoot the <laughs> you moon. Might throw, <laughs> throw off the whole universe. <laughs> Um, so, you know, if, you, if, you, if we're, the world is going to float off into space, <laughs> but, <yeah>. whatever. <laughs> and at this rate, we're probably that's probably happening pretty soon, anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh man, yeah, it's it was, you know, like it's a solo album, but I definitely had a lot of help, a lot of friends, and and you know, not just just personal friends, but also like people musicians that i admire help like lend their hands to like craft it into something that you know that i that i'm proud of and but but as as the writing process goes yeah it was like a lot um like you know like freeing and liberating in a big way but also Mm -hmm. scary because like i you know it's a different a different territory and and but there was no there's no like boundaries really like I didn't have to you know I could I didn't have not not to necessarily had to with Larry's Flask but but I didn't feel like it's it's brand new so I didn't feel like I already had to like appease anybody you know or, or anything mm-hmm, like right. that like wanted to just just get get stuff out out of me and get it like get it out there to however it's like supposed to be you know and uh mm-hmm. yeah luckily I had a a good friend and um amazing musician todd rosenberg from mad caddies like oh produce nice it yes yes and engineer it and drum on it so he was a huge like and him like mad caddies and larry's fast kind of like you know different genres but kind of like same kind of energy and stuff so he he was all about like setting the vibe and keeping the vibe high and like not like you know he was he's a proponent of like a one or two takes as he's like if you don't get it in the first or second take like it's probably not going to be good after that you know it's like right if, if it starts to like okay so you just start overthinking and so we kind of a lot of it like especially the vocal takes and stuff we're just like one or two takes and then we kind of well and, and now that you say he was involved and in like um like you coming from larry's flash him from mad caddies like that the first track uh, what was it mama's boy right yep. um on, yeah. the, on the, the opening track on the album like it just builds up into like the amazing like it starts out and then i i love when a song just builds up into something completely different and then it's just Mm -hmm. amazing horns backing uh like the energy that you started out with as well so like built into the horn parts and i just love the horns so (laughs) in in anything yeah he was definitely like he was conducting the he was conducting the horn parts for sure and like andrew from larry and his class was playing trombone on it and then a couple other like great trumpet players who I play with in, in town okay. in different projects were like one's like a jazz like a, has like a PhD in like jazz um, and music education the other one's like a kind of like funky rock and roll kind of trumpet player and they they both laid down their thing and Todd's just like in there like like melting the horn parts <laughs> <out there. laughs> yeah it was it was no. great because uh, I I wasn't sure because I mean you play um you play brass as well correct. I play a uh, uh, baritone, euphonium, and tr- it's pretty much like a like it's the same. It's B flat, like a trumpet, um, but you know, like okay. several octaves lower. Jesus Christ! Sorry if y'all can hear that. <laughs> what, what was it? Oh, somebody walked driving by with uh, their bass turned all the way the fuck up. Jesus Christ! Oh no, you're, you're fine. Yeah, this. Yeah, man. No, it's this is a very warm, very warm and very warm album and um i'm literally looking forward to seeing when you're able to come out here on the road and really see it live and experience it live because um you're uh just lyrically felt very full felt very personal um and like and then you also i feel like you you drew in some of you drew in a lot of what's happening in the world right now um and just in I don't know, just very beautiful, and I, um, I was playing on back to fucking back, and I was really happy because when you showed when you showed me shoot the moon a few months ago, I was like, oh, okay, all right, and it's been just a pleasure. It was honestly, I was just like, 
whenever somebody is, shares music with me, especially if it's not necessarily out yet, I'm always just kind of like, I feel very um, privileged for that. So when, so, and then I was able to share with Sam and we were both like, Ooh, we both looked at each other like, okay, <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> so well, when I saw the, when I saw the video for shoot the moon, it, it, mm-hmm. it made it kind of solidified more. So like, what were you, what you were going for? Cause it was like, it is very serious, but then it has like a goofy side to it as well. And I, I love the, I'm a mail carrier. So I just love that you threw the mail uh, <laughs> while you were on the bicycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were trying like, yeah, it all kind of that whole video concept just came from a from a fucking inside joke. Well, when we were recording the song, and it was like, <laughs> we're like, yeah, we should make this music video, blah blah. <laughs> and then when it came down to it, we were like, yeah, let's make this video. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just getting down dancing in a field. It it, it it's so good. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, that was it was a lot. Yeah, of fun. yeah. Uh, what <laughs> what yeah. even what um what brought up doing a solo album? Like, were you just wanting to do something a little bit different or um, like guys, other guys doing different projects and doing your own little thing or what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. Like, I don't mean, I don't want to break your guys' hearts or anything. Cause I know you're fans of the flats, no. but we're, we're kind of at a, at a, like a permanent hiatus place with Larry and his okay. class. So like everybody's kind of doing their own thing, but, but you know, I kind of, I kind of like, even years ago, I kind of like felt like I, w- like I was losing my voice in the band. You know, there's, <laughs> there's like, we're a band of songwriters and, and some really, you know, Ian's an incredible singer and, and songwriter. Yeah, no, this, is, this isn't a Cialis commercial. Sam, yeah, fun. yeah. You didn't even you didn't even get my 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 shout out for me doing ads, man. I was doing ads yeah. for stuff that keeps your dick hard. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Food for Worms, everybody. We yeah we, <laughs> we had a some... we had a technical mishap, and then we uh you know had a quick second talking about uh you know male supplements. performance issues. Yeah, exactly. You know, hopefully we're all uh ver- ver- oh, is it is it virile? Just virile and just great skin until we're yeah. older. Hell yeah. But, but I, know, I feel to... like bear is the wrong word. I have to look that up now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't let that hang out in the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, you know, just feeling like I feel like I had a lot to say and a lot lyrically that I wanted to say and a lot musically in different directions I wanted to go that didn't really wasn't really fitting into like the parameters of, of, of Larry and his class and kind of what mm-hmm. Larry and his class became. So I just, you know, I just wanted to kind of go out there and, and, you know, see what, see what happens and kind of work yeah. with other musicians and, mm-hmm. and make something for yourself. That's uh, that's very, yeah. Cause before you said like my heart broken and, and, and I will say like, there is a, it's a bummer, but like, I appreciate when anybody steps outside of their, outside of what they're normally doing and then they try something new and i think all things have to end <laughs> at some point and, <laughs> and it's also like also hiatus means it can come back whenever and i think people going yeah. off and finding their own voice and finding and building their own shit and then coming back and like hey how are everybody doing because i'm sure they're still love there y'all are still kicking it see each other around and shit so right. um i i, I think it's incredible i think it's very brave to strike out you know on your own and do and and also to the fucking the whole achievement of making a whole album that is yeah. that is you that is your voice that is so fucking like people not enough people people they have their opinions but about everything and but a lot of people that, <laughs> that write their like right. music blogs on the shit like they ain't never made a fucking album they don't know it's like the fucking barrier soul out into the world they, right. they just fucking don't so <laughs> so, so it's like I, I applaud you for making this i applaud i um uh fucking move, moving forward move forward always forward that's how i always fucking feel about it because right yeah because every artist started out one way and and if anybody kind of keeps doing the same thing you run some sometimes you're on the risk of running stagnant and and if you're right. like yeah for really i went and made your own fucking album fuck yes Again, like when you said you were making a solo album, I was like, I'm looking forward to this because again, love, I love, 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 love Larry and his flask. But whenever I went there, I was like, Josh was gonna fucking blow the shit up right now, and it's gonna be fucking the shit. So, <laughs> so to see you, so to see you out here on your own is fucking great, man. And I look forward to when you make your way to Minnesota and or New York. Oh, I live out in New York now, like an asshole. Oh, dope, yeah. man. You in yeah. the city? 
Yeah, live over in Brooklyn in the uh, hey Sam, uh, block this like block this audio. Ding. Yeah, ding. Yeah, I don't want motherfuckers rolling up on me. Not that that would ever. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any enemies in Brooklyn. No, I yet. think you're fine, D. Um, <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Working on it. Um, but how did that, how did that feel like diving into that? Cause I know you've been p- performing solo for a while and you've written these songs and then now you've mm-hmm. released this album, but like going out of your comfort zone, you know, doing flask for so long and then moving into this, was that like scary or exciting or like a mixture of a bunch of different shit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Both. All of that. <laughs> I think definitely, <laughs> definitely scary, exciting, but, uh, mm-hmm. I think more exciting than every, anything else. Like, and, uh, you know, I, I like to be challenged and I like to like push, you know, push my skills and push my, my boundaries. And I, I've just been really like focusing on, on just song, just the songwriting and singing aspect of it. So mm-hmm. I've been challenging myself like a, over quarantine. I've, I've been writing, like I try to write it, write and finish a song every day. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've wow. just been trying to like, just push. And some of the songs from the album, I started writing like, 10 years ago and and mm-hmm. some of them i wrote like in quarantine basically uh-huh. oh yeah no that's the, that's the thing i was going to ask you next like so like, what was your you're a part of the industry and as as an artist but you also do uh, you're also a producer you're a um um producer and a promoter as i understand as well yep like yeah so like what what yep. was i'm sure it was hard <laughs> but like like what <laughs> yeah. what were you like what were you getting into outside of making music like what, what like what did you do to fill your time during this uh gigantic time where our whole industry just died <laughs> the, death, <laughs> the death of, the death of uh, music like you know because like it's rising out of the grave again it's like it's like uh stop loss yeah stop loss <laughs> yeah. yeah totally and it's still it's like all like more like yeah you know, crazy it's like, like one eye yeah yeah, it looks like it's a it's a really <laughs> shitty Cialis commercial. It's all bad. So. <laughs> yeah, honestly, honestly, I wish I wish I could say like, oh, I like got my doctorate degree or like I learned to work on classic vintage cars or something. But in all honesty, man, I was like, oh, my income was was gone, and I had to just mm-hmm. get in my car and deliver like DoorDash and Grubhub. Dead ass, or, man. Hey, and that's yeah. real. That's fucking real. Don't 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 feel bad about that shit at all. Cause like I I I was fortunate enough to still to still have a job throughout it, but I also fucking was delivering pizza. So don't don't feel about that about about that shit. I I was fucking delivering for a pizza pizza shop in Minneapolis for uh, a just one day under a year, and then I... <laughs> please yeah. continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, man. It was like yeah, it was real like that. It was just I was pulling up to people's houses and like bringing their food, and they they'd be like. Oh, I love your music, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, take the fucking food. Thank you. Taste food. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's how it, that's how it goes, right? Like working so that you can continue to do what you love. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you gotta right. you gotta pay the bills still. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's. No, that was uh, um, I guess since you're delivering, you, do y'all get a lot of snow? In, uh, you do, in yeah. I, I don't, yeah, yeah. I'm actually in Bend. Okay, really? I'm doing? over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck? Did, Jesus Christ. Where did I hear Eugene? Because I, mm, I texted you. I hit you last yeah, night. Yeah, you asked about me about okay. Eugene. I'm like, well, Fuck. Okay. It, hey, everybody. He's from Bend. Maybe. I'm yeah. bad at this. Jesus That's Christ. Cool. I'm sorry. Dude, <laughs> no, what's all good, man. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm like in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin Oregon, right now. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Sipping on a La Croix. Yeah. La Croix. <laughs> Got Papa Moose in one hand and, and uh, Great grapefruit in another. Yeah. There and then in between is a conundrum. That's the Alice in one hand and Pumpkin Moose. Alice, even what we think it is, I hope it's. <laughs> it's probably like a stroke medication or something, <laughs> like for high blood pressure. <laughs> oh my God, word up, man. Well, uh, we're, um, I think we're gonna um move on to our next part. Um, but before we do all that, we're gonna take one quick break, everybody. Uh, just when, and while this is happening, we're gonna be look, finding out what exactly Cialis is, so we can all make sure that this joke hasn't been wildly inappropriate. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> food performance podcast is sponsored by better help sam you've been to therapy right yeah it, it always helps my brain and my heart to get the weird sad scary stuff off my chest yeah, man the case of the sads comes at you fast but yeah without without a healthy mind being truly happy and that peace in this day and age is just hard it truly is 
Well, and I mean, who wants to go to an office where you you have to be no. by like a real life human? Absolutely not. No, not not in this meat, not in this meat body, sir. No, I'm not doing that. Well, and the, and then like the recycled air, just, just that you have, you, you both yeah, have to breathe yeah, in each other's val- faces to validate your parking and talk to Janice outside. No, thank you. To so avoid that nightmare fuel, BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, or live chat sessions with a licensed therapist. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and can start communicating with the therapist in under 48 hours. That's nice, right? Yeah, Super yeah. Right. This Super podcast right. is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Food for Worms listeners get ten percent off their first month at BetterHelp dot com slash Food for Worms. Goddamn right. That's Better H E L P dot com slash Food for Worms. And we're back. See, Alice is exactly what we thought it was. The jokes landed. Hell fucking yeah, Sam. I'm so see. Sorry. I was right. I was on point. Right. I knew. I know I my knew my. My uh, sexual enhancement male drugs. Oops, I bonked my microphone there. And you guys, your your inbox is being flooded with like offers to, of new sponsorship. Yeah, or or people are or or like listeners are now like emailing us like, what's your what's your code? Like, what what do you guys? Or how, what, what's our what's the deal we get? <laughs> Nothing. We are not affiliated with with Cialis, but shout out to all the homies at Cialis. Yeah, if they like, want to we'll, help we'll ta- a dude out. Yeah, we'll <laughs> talk to them. Maybe we'll talk to them in like ten or fifteen or you know twenty years, whatever happens. Yeah, yeah. See what's up? Yeah, hopefully everything will you know, be in, in done in VR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no more human contact. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have evolved past human contact by then for sure. Yeah. We, was it, was it just touch? like a. No. <laughs> I saw something that said that like twenty twenty one is the movie uh, Demolition Man. You, you ever, y'all remember that film? I've never seen Demolition Man. Oh man, man. I don't know. If, oh, I, if I have, it's been a it's been too long to remember. All right, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Wesley Snipes, Sandra I'm Bullock. Upset. <laughs> uh, without getting too far into it, just uh, Demolition Man, uh, cop who's who likes who gets results, but his results have a fucking body count. Wesley Snipes is basically a fucking terrorist monster asshole who kills a bunch of people. And they go off. Uh, uh, they end up both getting frozen, going off into the future. Uh, okay, Sandra Bullock is this know. cop who's in the future, and she uh, and I guess in the culture they don't they don't touch anymore. They just do like a so like a high five, do like like a wave in front of each other's hands. So like like it's like a theremin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a theremin. <laughs> they do a theremin to each other, and then the movie just kind of takes off. But there's so much in that movie that 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 you know it isn't like a. It isn't like a uh, a Simpsons level of predicting the future, but there's a few things that he's kind of like back in 1995 or ni- maybe earlier than that. They really they kind of had a few things pegged, but it's like unfortunate. It's not like in a fun way. So it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus Christ, funny. yeah, man. Um, I was just thinking of Repo Man, which oh, that's God. definitely not that movie. It's just Emilio Estevez, is, we, like. Uh, trying to be a badass in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you know, Dude, he, they, got, he, uh... they predicted a lot of stuff in general just in the 80s. Like, yeah. Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Like, Biff, oh, yeah. like Biff's character when he stole the sports almanac and, and went like back in the future and became like, controlled the town. It's like, that's pretty much Donald Trump. Like, <laughs> well, and I think that's the thing is like, they have said that that character was based <laughs> on him. Yeah, Jesus. and um, and um, uh, oh, his that. mom, Lorraine, uh, who is in that in that future, uh, what what is that? What's that time shift or whatever to where things mm-hmm. change to where she right. was married the to Biff now? The whatever. one thing, the one thing that actress took from like her her costume from that set were her uh, prosthetic breasts. <laughs> so that's another <laughs> fact for you to take home. <laughs> God, I hope that I'm like in some uh, in some. Uh... What's the uh, the trivia thing at some bar, and then that comes up, and I'm just like, I know that one. I know that because of Sam. Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, there's the yeah my my random fact for the day that is completely useless unless you're at some bar trivia. Yeah, <laughs> randomly yeah. somewhere yeah. talking about. Uh, there's only about five movies that I could win at trivia with, like mm-hmm. and like know most things, um, but it's all pretty much useless information at this point. I will say that having having a bunch of useless information has has helped me win a, a trivia just one time, and it was just kind of, it was one of those things where it was like the stars aligned. Apparently, the person that was running trivia was my best friend. 
not in real life, but just because everything they asked, I was like, I know this. I know this now. Like, get out <laughs> of my like fucking reading head. Your mind. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was crazy. But I will say there are sometimes where the trivia is, gets way too out of hand. Um, specifically when they're like, can you name like a river in this really weird city in this, in in, in the small in the small town in fucking Kansas, or like or like county names? I'm like, why the fuck would I know a county name in the west on the uppermost west side of, of Pennsylvania? Some people do why? though. They know like I every know, single thing is, about every it is, yeah. It is wild. It is. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. remember going to my very first trivia and he's being like, why are we even here? Like, who would know this? And then people at the table, man, they were just bawling out. They knew all the fucking answers. It's crazy. My girlfriend and I, we just binge watched the entire season of Jeopardy. Mm. <laughs> it was just like, nice. there's guys in there that were just like, how do you know all of this? Like, yeah. what? Like, there's like 25 year old dudes that are just like, you know, the answer to every random question that is like, yeah. what? <laughs> 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 then they, uh, didn't they used to get the new um isn't mayim she played blossom and she's been in some other tv shows and she's also a neuroscientist but uh uh she's gonna be she, she wants to be the new uh host full-time host of of jeopardy and oh wow i'm all for it that's dope well, and, uh, yeah. and uh, uh sorry i can't remember his name but who, what is the guy what is his name from reading rainbow because he was he was one lavar burton do lavar burton doesn't want to do fucking jeopardy anymore because they were dicking around too much and fucking bless that man <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't fuck with yeah, him, <laughs> yeah no like you're not lavar burton is no one sloppy seconds he's <laughs> there's the name of the not. episode <laughs> <laughs> Var Burton is no one's sloppy seconds. Out of context, like no oh, Jeopardy dude. involved, Darian. That is a fucked up conversation, okay? And and I think we need to have it in the other context of where we could take this. Um, because Var Burton is, is no one's sloppy seconds. Dude, what does no, that mean to you, Darian? <laughs> it means that Joey LaForge. Lavar Burton himself in fucking Reading Rainbow. He knew what the fuck he wanted from young. He was in he was in Roots. He was in those other things that I've already said out loud. And those things I know <laughs> off the top of my head. And Lavar Burton is a treasure, uh, both in thought and in his heart. And we and no matter okay, I think between the three of us and hopefully a good chunk of our listeners, we've all been impacted by that man in one way or another. Him and Jaleel 100%. White. Him and Jaleel White. <laughs> 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 Who doesn't and love some Urkel? In the sky. Yeah, I can roll twice as high. I can sing Wait, better what, than that. What are you singing now? That's the fucking Reading Rainbow song, man. <laughs> oh, I I was going it's Family animal. Matters with it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even on Family Matters. What the fuck are you talking? Jaleel White was yeah, motherfucker. White. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I only brought him up because I think he was going for uh some type of i think he was on a um game show at one point but dude I'm jaleel sure. white sells uh, weed right now yeah he sells I just, weed i just yeah. listened to him on a pot on, on uh talib quali's podcast hell yeah and i was like yeah man he's killing it he's like yeah. selling weed and producing he's, he's shows kicking it. <laughs> like yeah dude, he's <laughs> kicking it no there's well, here's the thing he he uses he uses social media like somebody's uncle and he's probably just somebody's uncle. Like, he feel like if you think of your any uncles you were blessed to have, um, just just shit posts all the fucking time. I'm just on his story, just flipping through. Sometimes it's kind of like, what am I gonna see today from Jillio White? And it's almost always something that like my uncle would definitely see. Me. <laughs> some some sort of funny meme that's like <laughs> yeah, but like, no, like, it, it's funny. But you think you're like, Ugh, like I'm not gonna share that. But okay, <laughs> isn't that kind of funny? You don't want to tell too. You're like too many of your friends that you think is funny, but you, yeah, <laughs> you're like yeah. you yeah, wouldn't like, share uh, it, but you're gonna laugh. I, at I wouldn't you. share, but I would definitely be like, huh, and then keep moving while I'm on the toilet, which is usually when that happens. So <laughs> he like sees it and then like screenshots it and <laughs> shares yeah. it. He's like, oh. And then Alfonso Ribeiro comes in doing the, yeah. doing the Carlton. <laughs> dude, dude, that's the dude, that's the trifecta. Lavar Burton, Alfonso was was it Alfonso Riviera? I think it's Ribeiro or something Ribiero. like that. He was he and was at Julia one point White, the, f- the trifecta. They are they are the <laughs> they are the uh, they are the key. They are the the way and the light. If those three came together, if they if, I think if they touched, I think that they would create a singularity that would wipe out the whole planet. 
the, 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 either that or shooting the, the moon. triangle. Yeah. <laughs> the moon just explodes. Yeah, the moon just explodes behind them, and they just look you. They and then they turn and just look into the camera, and you just kind of like three generate. No, mostly the same generation of people just looking at you like it was us. Yeah, yeah that's all people. right out of the late eighties, <laughs> early nineties. Just uh, yeah. They're get they've they've been planning it all along. <laughs> oh my god! Like all the stuff that raised us after school. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, give that man his flowers, dude. I saw some. This is a while ago. I saw some story where he was talking about how uh, some fan went up and just punched him in the face one time, and he just beat that fan's ass. I oh, allegedly. So I don't know. <laughs> Written him allegedly. Oh, that's allegedly. But no, allegedly, <laughs> this dude, like, he was standing in the line, and this guy got all like, says, Oh my God, it's Alfonso, it's Carlton. And the guy punches him in the face. So then, uh, allegedly, and then Alfonso <laughs> just lays into this guy, allegedly. He's like, Why did you do that? He's like, I don't know. And then, <laughs> and, then just, and I guess it's like, you know, maybe the person that maybe might have been a punk in the show is probably not a punk in real life. Right. It's not <laughs> unusual to get your ass beat by Carlton in real yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If that's the if that's your claim to fame is like, oh, I met Carlton. Oh, what happened, man? Oh, he beat my ass because yeah. I punched him in the face. Yeah. Oh, you. He didn't. <laughs> hey, guess what? He didn't appreciate it. So whatever. Just because he plays a nerd doesn't mean he is like a nerd. Yeah, he is. Maybe right. he, he is. is but hands. Still... Dude, I don't know well, if I like. What are you about to say, Sam? Well, oh, there's a there's a later episode in the show. Like, I I definitely watched uh, Fresh Prince. Like, it was like my after school TV show uh, when I was mm-hmm. younger. But um, there's definitely an episode where he ends up doing a strip tease for some reason, and the dude was fucking ripped <laughs> back then. So yes, I can only was. imagine like he's had to keep that up because of the um, you know, the the thoughts people are like, this guy's exactly like Carlton. Like they just put him in a box, and he's like, no, I'm not. Don't punch no, me in I'm the not. face. I'll put, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks like he could he could he could bench at least four fifty just on his own, like with an unassisted. He doesn't need any help. But he, I mean, he's he's stat. He's a fucking. I almost say he's a Alfonso Rivera is a thick man. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> he went from reading Rainbow to Alfonso Rivera is a thick man. <laughs> he's a thick man. <laughs> Straight from the thickness, Alfonso Rivera into um, a conversation about comfort zones. If yeah, all, if, you, if you all have me, um, or uncomfortable and, zones. Yeah, I think I think the conversation about comfort zones and then stepping outside of it, outside of yep. your comfort zones. And and Joshua, you can obviously speak to that right now because you're you're in this massive, or or were in this massive uncomfortable place where you have to step outside your comfort zone and make something of your own, and that takes hard work, fucking blood, sweat, and tears went into this album. I guess, but like th- that doesn't have to be your answer to this. So I guess it's like if everybody could hear, think about times when they've had to hop, stop out of their comfort zone in order to get to where they want it to be or go or just or just to get out of something and and, and into where they want to be. Um, yeah. And anybody can start if they want. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess like where yeah. I, I what I I just want to say like my first my first thought like why I said un uh your uncomfort zone is. Like that's where my brain went right away because it was mm-hmm. more so like, how have I put myself into uncomfortable situations that I needed to do? And mm-hmm. then um, I ended up, you know, being better for it. So like I got sober like a year and a half ago. And then I've okay. with that, I've become a lot less social and um, I've just kind of learned to be in with myself and be a little bit more introverted because my comfort zone was always surrounding myself around other people so that I didn't have to deal with my own shit or look internally. So like last couple of years has just been me putting myself in that uncomfortable position of like, you know, analyzing, figuring these things out and trying to figure it out on my own. So I guess that's where my brain went when you had, you know, brought up this topic earlier today. D. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I, I think it's like no matter a, a bit off no, the, I think that no matter what, whether it's an uncomfort zone or a comfort zone, it's still comfort and zone are still in the sentence, and I think it means the same yeah, thing. Yeah. So, it's all, so it's like, so at this point, it's like it's the it's what we're talking about, but it depends on which way you come at it. So in this case, you just said exactly what well, like what you need to do to get out of it in order for you to right. get to where you want it to be. So I guess it's like yep. our um, I guess for me, my comfort zone is 
Um, I love being left the fuck alone more than anything in this world. I love my solitude. Like I will, I will sit in a quiet room and read a book, or or watch a movie, or go to a movie by myself and sit in the farthest corner away from everyone else. However, I've learned over time that's not a way to live. You need to be your own people sometimes. <laughs> and but well, humans, we're not solitary beings. And I think that we okay, we are, but we are not like permanent solitary beings. Like I guess that's right. <laughs> um, and, right. <laughs> so, um, and for me, like actually being intentional about calling people in, um, because I'm not like an out of sight, out of mind friend, but I just think, but it's like if you got people got their own shit going on like and if you need and i'm also like if you need me call me right sam so it's like so it's like if you oh, call yeah. you call i don't screen your phone calls i pick up first fucking ring sometimes it's like what up but before yeah. that i might have been just been fucking off doing something or going for a walk alone um but so basically but polar I... opposite of me <laughs> in my comfort zones <laughs> I guess um, me, what I was saying is working as an industry professional, my solitude has gotten in the way of me uh, doing the things that you're supposed to do, which is just meeting people and 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 uh, pushing things forward and break and just, I don't know, like just, you're just supposed to meet people. You're supposed to just yep. talk to people, um, get to know them. And, and I guess for me, like, I try, I, when I do come out of my comfort zone, I try to talk to people. I do that. I try to do it like on a deeper level for that's appropriate for the moment, obviously. But just like, if I I, I don't want to just be like, I, I, small talk is just kind of like, blah, unless it's like there's no yep. time for anything other than small talk, then whatever. But um, this industry is very very social. It is it is it is a who you know and but it's also what you know. But it's like it's also like if you're an asshole, no one wants to fuck with you. <laughs> but um, right. and even if you're so an asshole, some people they still get the fucking the bees knees or whatever but over time if you don't make a point to step outside and really get to know folks and talk to folks and engage with folks they won't know you they won't know you at all they'll just be like you know that guy yeah, he seems cool and for a little bit that was getting in my own way because i was just kind of and i was like i'm because i was like i'm shy and no matter what yes i am shy but the um but at some point that wasn't helping me at all even when people that did get little glimpses of my personality, they, that wasn't helping me. They was kind of like, I still don't know him. And once I, I was like, and the one I made a point to be like, all right, motherfucker, kick yourself out of here. Just go. And it felt like a, it was, it felt risky. I was like, Ugh, I feel like being, being seen. And I still struggle with that. But the, the feeling of getting past that was way worth it. Cause once you get there, I get to meet new people. I actually get like Joshua. When I, when I met you at, uh, at the turf club, I was kind of like, I was like, uh, uh, Fuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, and, 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 and I guess that dynamic is I'm a fan in Europe. I said you're literally loading out. So it's like I don't want to bother you anyway, but just actually like taking a moment to step outside my comfort zone and be like, hey, you're rad. Nice to meet you and talk and chat. But uh, yeah, for me, it was it was stepping outside of that, stepping outside of me, my solitude and wanting to be uh, in my own corner and actually stepping outside and meeting people. Um, so that's mine. How about you, Joshua? What's your? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I can relate with all that. Like, I'm kind of, uh, in a way, like a what do you call it? Like a introverted extrovert, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I I need to like, I in fact I learned this from quarantine because I maybe just ignored it over the years or like self medicated to help ignore it, but like being like. Like you said, you were sober for a year and a half or so, and I, I have been sober for like eight years or so, like at least oh, from okay. alcohol and whatever. But but just being – like I, I have like – I didn't realize that I was such a creature of like habit and routine up until mm -hmm. quarantine. And then mm -hmm. now that I like have come to terms with that, I know how to like operate better. So like <laughs> well, this doesn't really have – you know reflect on getting out of your comfort zone but but i ha like i can relate that to to just feeling like wanting to just yeah I've, you know sit here read a book or <laughs> yeah <laughs> work on my own shit not not yeah. go and network but but yeah that's obviously yeah. a huge part of 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 what we do is like mm -hmm. connecting with people on more than just the like 
on on a passing Skin level. Like, surface way. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like ste- um, stepping outside of our comfort zones uh, at the at the industry it was it's about getting to know someone just a few layers deeper, and because you get you do that and people they they they'll let you in a little bit further and not so much because you need or want something from them because that's that's also a huge fucking pratfall of the industry where it's like you try to get to know somebody obviously you want some, some something from them um and i do i do my best personally not to have that be it like if i meet somebody i'm not i don't need anything usually from anybody um but if i meet somebody it's not with the express purpose of getting something from them um right and if i'm taking time out of my out of my comfort zone to actually meet somebody and get to know them. It is because I feel like there is hopefully a connection here that isn't just professional and you seem, and you seem cool. Um, well, and, 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 and you could gain their trust and um, maybe like mutual respect. And, and, and like, that's how you can like build on that, even like professional relationship and make it more than just a, Hey, how's it going? Give me this thing that I need, and oh, I'll talk to you later. See you next time. I need something. No, but, but, but here's the, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. So much, of, and Josh, maybe we can talk about this some more too. But like, so much of, um, so much of the industry is that, but not, in a, but not on a, uh, on a, on a shitty level. Because sometimes mm-hmm. it is just like you know somebody you got you you got a dude in Eugene who's just, who's good at this thing. You got to hit him up real quick. You don't know what the fuck Steve's been doing for a little bit, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Steve, Steve is in Bend. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I think he's actually in Portland, but. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking about Dave. Hi. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> Amazing. But, but at the same time, like that, that as like sometimes as surface level as it does seem, it's like, it's appreciated because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, because I know that dude that might be able to help us with this. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're not just trying to get a, a free favor out of everybody, then it's like, yeah, yeah that's that's right. how the, the network of like the DIY, like music world works, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. DIY or, or whatnot, but. I guess like with stepping outside of our comfort zones, I guess like what are some of the risks that we like the risk that we tell ourselves of, of really stepping outside of them. Like, cause, cause I think that, that that's what a lot of this is, is like trying to mitigate risk. And I guess when we're, when we're inside of our box, um, looking outside of it seems really fucking scary. And I guess like, what, like, what do you tell your, what, what are the things that you've told yourself in the past that kind of step you, that stop you from doing it right away? Right. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, like, I, I'm not like, not like a natural singer. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I had a play and I'm still like working and pushing, pushing my boundaries and trying to become like a better singer. But for years, like I, I, I would, didn't feel comfortable about like, like I could sing backups and whatever, but I didn't feel comfortable about like carrying like a whole song vocally mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And like that, you know, to, to, touch back on like like my solo album stuff like I had to I had to like break through all that mental barrier shit and like skill level and keep working on it not giving up like for a long time before I felt comfortable to be like okay I'm ready you know to take this into the studio or whatever like yeah I guess just to if you know there's something inside of you that you that tells you like I need to do this right mm-hmm. it's yeah. like for whatever reason you can't even necessarily explain it but there's like if like you know in regards of like art or whatever if if you have something inside of you that you need to get out there you if you don't do it you're gonna regret not doing it right yeah so so it's like i guess it just gets to a point at least for me it's like am i gonna regret not doing something or like Mm -hmm. maybe like not do it perfectly for a long time or maybe never mm-hmm. do it perfectly, but at least like I'm fucking, fucking working out. I'm pushing for it. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, no, you're putting the so... music out there for, for listeners, but it's also like you're putting, you know, you're getting stuff off of your chest. You're putting stuff into the world for yourself as well at the same time to hopefully have, you know, maybe someone else uh, relate to it in the process, mm-hmm. I guess. Right. Like, yeah. Music, music for me has always been like very, 
like therapeutic, like from both like a, a listening perspective and a performing or creating perspective. Mm-hmm. Like I, I need to write songs. I need to write lyrics. I need to like sing and do all that just to feel like a normal fucking human being, you know, like, or I can't, mm-hmm. or, and perform too. Like if I don't, if I don't play shows and if I don't get out there, like, and express myself in that way, I just don't feel okay, <laughs> you know, mentally. Right. And right. Then, like, so, and if I don't hear music and if I don't listen to music, like I feel shitty and weird too, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I mean, that, that feeling of, uh, I, I guess catharsis is the word you could use, but like for me, but it's like, like, I personally listen to a lot of Dungeons and Dragons podcasts. And then when I realized, and because that's just my thing, I like to put on it in a earbuds and I just go about my, whatever it is I'm doing. And, um, and I can look up and I've done that all week and I haven't listened to any music. And then I'm like, what the, like, ugh. and then it doesn't matter if it's, if I'm looking for catharsis or if I'm just looking for a fucking sick riff at this one fucking part, like music that helps me reset. So I, I, I feel that entirely hundred percent where he's kind of like, um, being on the other side of just a listener and um, and searching for that feeling. And music is definitely a, a huge catalyst for that. Um, Sam, how about you? What, with, with, with wrists? music? With no, I wrists? guess with, 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 with wrists, like the one, the things that you told yourself um, to stop, I mean, that, I stop you from moving forward right away. I think it's, I think a lot of it is like failure and like, um, failing myself and then like failing like my family. And cause you know, I've got a wife and a kid and it's, it's just like putting myself into an awkward position. Also, you know, you're risking something to gain, you know, hopefully something positive, but if it doesn't, mm-hmm. then it kind of hits you in the face. So it's just like, it's like asking out your, 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 12 13 years old you're asking out the girl that you have a crush on and you're worried that mm-hmm. she's gonna say no you know you put yourself out there yeah. like that's a very basic way yeah. of fucking putting it but every every dude but every so girl has been... <laughs> yeah yeah right. everybody's everybody's yeah. had some type of scenario like that that it's like yeah you're just afraid right. to put yourself out there because it's fucking terrifying and i guess right. that's and rejection sucks. the most <laughs> yeah yeah it is <laughs> with no, with music with girls with everything yeah <laughs> right yeah like like I think maybe when the guy when he punched Alfonso Rivera in the face, he was like, "I'm afraid of being rejected, so I'm just gonna punch him." And then, then he got his ass beat. Exactly. That's what he was. <laughs> that's what he was terrified of. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, I feel that because like everything was so fucking was so heavy when we were kids. Like, like, just yeah. like just getting yelled at by by a parental or an adult figure, or just or like being faced with a choice: do it or don't. And yep. if you're in um. And the the feeling of absolute fucking dread, it's terrible. So um, I know all that shit all too well. And sometimes this shit carries over into your adulthood in different ways. Um, well, yeah. And I was yeah, gonna say, yeah. like, you you get used to the things that you are comfortable with. So like, mm-hmm. that's that could be in certain situations that could be like your go to thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not gonna step out of my box because I feel you know. Obviously, the word is comfort. Like there's yeah. nothing weird about this situation. I'm not diving into anything dicey, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was I look at stuff and I, I um I always ask like what is it that I need to do in order to get past this this hurdle, and mm-hmm. if I can and if I can determine that it it's going to just take ten seconds of being uncomfortable, then I will work my way up to doing it. Like it, it's a fucking hill when you get up to it, but it's like sometimes you just need to be brave for ten seconds or two seconds. Sometimes the, the brave is right. just telling somebody to fuck off. And you're like, fuck off. Hey, I fucking yeah. said it. Look me in the eye. I fucking said, fuck <laughs> you. But the- <laughs> sometimes that's the hardest shit. At least for me, it's like, it's, sometimes it's hard for me to, to do that. To, mm-hmm. to tell people to fuck off. Sometimes it's yeah. real easy. I think I think most people's first reaction isn't to tell people to fuck off. But, but, when, yeah. but when you're able to and when you need to, it's like, I'll fucking yeah. tell anybody like like that that moment after telling somebody that that needs to fuck off to fuck off, anybody can get it for like thirty seconds with me. I was like, no, the wrong person says the wrong thing, and he's like, fuck yeah. off. 
Well, and that's the thing is that there's a need to say fuck off. Like that yeah. person needs to fuck off. Like they're yeah. you know, some, yeah. it's not yeah. just saying it to any random schmo. Yeah. Like you some will old lady fuck that off. needs to. Some yeah. old lady asks you to help her walk cross the street, and you're like, "Fuck off!" Fuck no, yeah. that's not. De- <laughs> you what smack you your groceries that? onto the ground and just walk Tim, away. I said anybody can get it, and so can that old lady across the street with their fucking grocery bags. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> But and uh, on, yeah. and on on yeah, on that note, <laughs> yeah, on that um, note, uh, I wanted I wanted um, to um I wanted to ask Jeshua, uh, with going into this new endeavor, and we're talking about going out of you know our comfort zones, and with everything that you've learned with, you know, going solo, and I'd say being successful at it, you know, you put out an album like that's something to come out of the fucking weirdest past couple of years, you know, going forth. Do you have any advice for our listeners of? maybe not just music, but just like going out of your comfort zone. Like, what would you say to people when they're dealing with something fucking scary like that? Yeah, I just, I don't know. As cliche as it sounds, just keep put, keep pushing, man. Just keep mm-hmm. like, if you know, like ask yourself, you know, cause sometimes we can do things that are, that are like, we might think they're cool or whatever. And we get doing it for a while. But like, just ask yourself is, you know, do I need to do this? And if the answer is yes, and you know that like in the core of like your being for whatever reason, then, then, then do whatever it takes, man. Like, like learn, like learn everything you need to know about it and just keep, keep moving forward and not, mm-hmm. not giving up if shit, if shit gets hard, you know, like, cause it will, yep. <laughs> yep. it will, it will. So there'll be days like, you know, at least in music, you'll be in the studio and it, you might have just like wasted an entire day because you weren't ready and you fucked mm-hmm. up. And like, pro- you just get, you're like, oh, well, the producer probably thinks I'm a piece of shit or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, did, oh, you boy, didn't get what you and wanted. Just, and yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and on top of that, you're like spending money like fucking up. Like, yeah. and then you realize, like, oh, okay, yep. I got to mm-hmm. come prepared, you know. There's yeah. shit on the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that all comes with like fucking learning and then having that shit happen and fucking and then like, yeah, you said like learning from it. No, that's right. so fucking true, man. And thank you so much for being here, dude. We appreciate dude, you. My, my pleasure, we, man. Thanks for appreciate the shit out of you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Well, are you are you are you going to be coming out with a record? Because I'm a big I'm a big record collector. So I oh yeah, know man. It's, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. What's this vinyl looking like, bro? Yeah, yeah dude. It, <laughs> so, okay, man. So you got I'm, you're you're in the music world, you know. That mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> Super fucked. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. So I put, I, I like put my paid the money, put my order in, in fucking April, right? And mm-hmm. and uh-huh. thinking that like this album's gonna be out in July, and I'm gonna have, and then it's like delay, 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 and I just got, yeah. I finally just got a, like I released it, you know, digitally, um, and whatnot, but the. I just got a, a text message yesterday that was like, your your albums are, your delivery is expected on, on the 29th. So nice. I'll have vinyl nice. in hand on nice. the 29th. Yeah, and then I, yeah, I didn't yeah. put up like a do a pre-order thing, but one, like I'm kind of just making sure they get here and they're like yeah. not fucked up and real. And then I'm going to put it, you know, put it, put it out there, but. But yeah, well, you gotta you gotta throw it on the throw it on the turntable, and then it, I'm sure it just feels like it's even more real, like right, you've got yeah, thing in your that. hands, you know. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah, incredible. Hell yeah, dude. Well, yeah, when yeah, those things are real. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. along with the new out with your new debut solo album, Shoot the Moon. Or again, if you shoot the moon, the whole world is just gonna do things. But yeah. I know it has. I I know what you mean. <laughs> that's so a, we're taking it literally a as we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joshua, your metaphor's gonna kill us all. <laughs> Don't actually try this at home, folks. Yeah, yes. <laughs> sitting on the porch, shooting the moon. Oh, shoot. But, <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for being here. The new album, Shoot the Moon, is out now on all streaming platforms. Um, please tell us. Do you have anything else you want to plug? Um, yeah, check it out. I've, I'm kind of being a little bit uh cautious with booking booking mm-hmm. a tour or anything to to tour on it i was going to be doing like a uk tour in in october on it but uh we decided to to postpone that to march so but yeah keep keep an eye out um uh, for tour dates and i'll be as soon as things are feel a little a little more like safe to to do it i'm going to be be out there touring on it so 
Fuck yeah. And people can just we'll people can just find it. you on uh, social medias and all that. Yeah, all that jazz. at Joshua Marshall on Instagram and uh, JoshuaMarshall.com. You can find links to everything there. So. Oh, awesome. People go check out go check out Jeshua's shit because I said not not shit as like it's shit, but great <laughs> fucking music. Like I said initially, like day it dropped, I was like Jeshua Marshall putting out solid shit in 2021. So that mm-hmm. that's how I feel about what you're doing right now, and I appreciate it, sir. And I appreciate you yeah. being here. Man, yeah, thank thanks you for being here, dude. Appreciate y'all. Well, um, I'm gonna take us out real quick. Uh, thank you yeah, all so it, much dude. for joining us. Uh, if you want to submit yes. any questions or topics, head over to bit.ly forward dash FFW grab bat or contact us at Thief Worms Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we got the ancestor humor. Uh, you need to, uh, we would really appreciate if you rate and subscribe to Food for Worms on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or listen to podcasts. Uh, you can be anywhere. Joshua, you could literally be anywhere, but you're here with us and we appreciate the shot of you. And as always, check on your strong friends, check on your, your quiet friends, check on your your uh, uh, introverted, on, your extroverted, and your introverted, <laughs> extroverted. Check on all those motherfuckers and make sure you tell them that you love them. And you know, you can't take any of the shit with you, so don't be a fucking dick. Don't be a dick. Right? Don't, don't be a dick. dick. This is this has been Food for Worms. Thank you, Joshua, for being here. Sam, I love you. Thank you. Guys. I love you too, Darian. Thank you, Joshua. You're the man. Joshua, I appreciate you. <laughs> Peace. Peace, buddy. Peace. The Food for Worms podcast is a hella hella rad rad production. It is recorded and mixed by Samuel Sarver. Executive producers are Darian Washington and Samuel Sarver. Theme music is Muffins by Dresden the Flamingo. Find us wherever you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and leave a review. Because we need those reviews. We do. And it, it helps people hear our, our stuff. It pushes us right to the top. But on top of that, we also get that sweet, sweet ass validation. Sam, have you been feel, have you felt validated lately? Sometimes. I'm the I'm I've I recently took, took up this new moniker. Play with me in this space. What's your new moniker? Validation Highlander. I used to be chopping fucking heads off, man. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Fuck them bullies. <laughs> Fuck them bullies. You get a validated. And you get a validated. And you? <laughs> and you? And you? And you? Do you <laughs> feel seen? <laughs> I'll cut your head off. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't know what we got till it's gone with the four wheels. 